quickly, so you can that allows you to flash for yourself. And that's why Sky is just such a potent agent right now, aside from Sky's kit. Yep. And don't forget about the regenerating guiding light that you can get oh, yes. after using the first one. It's also a big one. But I feel like it's the same question with the same answer, Bim. Which of these two agents will get more value? Because Kishi, as well as Wits, gonna be that head to head yet again in a way. Team play versus individual play, and Brent right now gonna be able to get two so far. Surfer still fighting on back behind the boxes. Kishi there yet again gave you a takedown, and this is gonna be a big start here for Surfers. Asuka will find his form, find the aim, and get the 3k here for Surfers. We said it a while ago, a few issues on the aim department here for Surfers Esports, and they just need to get back on their footing. No how secure they can be with those headshots and find the right positions one more time but uh, but to answer your question bim i feel like it's the it's a rehash right now of the ascent it's gonna be the same question on a different map which mm -hmm. agent will get more value which of these team two teams can punish one another and if you're looking for a little bit of deja vu i wouldn't be surprised to see it here compared from map number one to map number two. But the question now is, can Cerberus learn enough from their mistakes last time to change the oh fate my. of their team? Seems like that's the case so far with Dykelum getting three. The lobby filled by the corpses of Bren Esports and Cerberus howling into the night or howling in the afternoon here with a 2-0 lead. You know what, Tax? I blinked once, round one, done and dusted, right off the bat. I blinked another time, round two, done and dusted, just like that. And it's just Daikalem with a stellar effort, really bringing the fight into Brenny Sports. And again, Haven is just such a fun map to play because when you have the upper hand in terms of uh, economy, when you have the upper hand in terms of ultimate economy and firepower, it's just so easy, easy to push on those long lanes, try to take a forward aggressive position right here. But as we all know, Bren often goes for the third round turnaround. Let's see if this holds true. In this one. A bit of a tendency to lose that pistol, but get back on the recovery. Cerberus, though, that was a lot more secure compared to their last outing on the sense. And it does feel like right now that with Cerberus finding more names, getting those takedowns, it's going to be a good effort for them as a whole and a good sign for the team to truly be ready for this battle. I do commend Kishi's multiple takedowns on the Phoenix a while ago on Ascent, especially with uh, many, many running backs that he was able to play because of it. But at the same time, if Cerberus can scatter around those kills, give more confidence to the rest of the roster, and play the same way with the same kind of notions as Ascent, I, I think mm -hmm. it's going to be a lot more successful here for Cerberus Esports. If you have the likes of Suka, the likes of Akashi, popping off and finding the takedowns, Daikalim getting a better start overall, then they're going to be able to have many more left. guns that they can rely on, and that can help them steal this map away from Bren. But Bren, of course, they're going to go for that A take. Shock, shock. Secure with the guns, secure oh, with the sights. Right, Jesse Vash, though, going for the plant. He will get tagged quite a bit by the shock dart, but not fully. And here we have it. Recon dart flung into the air will land later on. Actually trying to count in my head how long it takes for it to land when it's flung into the air like that. I think it's just going to land the nick of time here, but Borkum out with a paranoia. Just get taken down by Dykelem underneath heaven. Sebastian though, finding to take down Dykelem right now. Going to get the refrag. It's going to be 4v3 there as Kishi throws out the curveball and is looking for anyone to take down. But Jesse Bash with a punish and stand. And Jesse Bash is not done. It's three here for Bash. It's on the board as well. And the Spencer tried to play into the sewer, but it's now 1v1. Phantom in hand here for Loki as time is ticking. Is there even any time now for Cerberus? There we have the defuse with though calling the action. And while sure Loki will get that takedown, Brent Esports buying enough time for themselves to win that round. A costly win for Bren Esports. Cerberus making the effort happen. And this is going to be a good time for Cerberus still. A point on Bren, yes. But Cerberus now ready to go with guns a blazing. Absolutely right. I mean, Bren at this point in time. And, you know, it's a very awkward position to be in. When you win that third round turnaround, but you lose all your guns in the process, Here. you feel like you still lost the round economically. So you have a, ch you have a choice of going with half armors, forcing those rifles, and some of you have half, half armors inspectors and then sometimes you just go on a full save actually but it seems like wits can oh, grab an orb here he can make something happen for the side of brenny sports that they are going to be committing to that buy 
Jesse Bash also has that Hunter's Fury, so I do understand the logic behind this decision. And there we go, Hunter's Fury on Jesse Bash. We know the Jesse Bash guarantee, but Jabba Sub's gonna be taking down Loki as well. <sighs> it starts. And there we have it, Dubstep Bash stepping on to that seaside basically with themselves and the Hunter's Fury respectively, but Suka! He is not going to get caught out unaware this time. He knows the mistakes he's made in that Ascent map. And this time he's looking for Retribution. And he's going for a show with that firing range. Three kills already here for Suka so far. Lockdown is a go as well. It's been incredible so far here for Cerberus. It does seem like the whole team right now is stepping up to the plate. And playing the best game that they can do so far in the first three rounds. And can they get more now? Now the lockdown gets nothing, but at the same time, Bren doubling back and going back to see sights. A little bit of the fake play on the rotation, but Cerberus, they're no fools. They understand what's going left. on. And Suka and Akashi looking for a pinch. Spikes planted here, Vim. Can we actually make this one work? Oh no, though, the plans of Cerberus, they fall to the wayside after the Seekers. And now, with the scouting information, it's Brand Esports knowing exactly where Akashi is. It's 2v1 with the regrowth now going for the heels off the Jesse Bash with line of sight. Not only that, Recon Dart is there, kind of Recon Darts in response from Akashi. Bounce, bounce, go onto the ground, and Jesse Bash will make sure Akashi will be on his knees and begging for mercy. Two to two. And yet again, Bren Esports with a smart play there at the very end. Good swing from Jesse Bash right there again with that very high altitude arrow. <laughs> this was. Really a good entry from Dubstep and Jesse Vash, just making it happen. The Vash guarantee getting a pick onto Garage. But it seems like they failed to clear backside here. And that, you know, they paid the price for that. Suka got a 3k out of nowhere, just standing over there in backside. And even though that was a lost round for Cerberus, that should give them a bit more confidence now in their aim that they can fight against Bren despite the lack of utilities on their side, if ever. Guiding Light, though, does get confirmation and dumps up already with the blades. Can he actually go for more as he's hunting down members here of Cerberus and looking to pin them to the wall, looking for even more and more of those bounties up into play. But misses all the shots there versus Suka. The Killjoy just basically doing the Matrix there and getting away with his life. But as I say, at yeah, that will deny him of a second chance. Dispenser on the board as well. And here comes Dyklem. There's the first takedown of Dorkum. Spikes planted here. Dyklem though trying to get on site and look for another one. But Wits, he's just going to be able to get precise with the shots yet again. Brand Esports now up by one, taking the lead away from Cerberus. There we go. Three consecutive rounds for Brand Esports just like that. CES, they need to fight back this early at this point in time. They gotta stop the bleeding because Bren, when they start to dictate the pace, they tend to not drop the ball. They, they just maintain and sustain their momentum. They adjust on the fly very, very quickly to try and keep their opponents guessing. CES need to understand this and make the necessary adjustments right now. For Cerberus, we've seen them figure out how to adjust. We've seen them figure out which part of the Bren playstyle is shining in the first place. For now, Bren Esports able to outsmart the competition, especially in that last round. And find the plays yet again in them. It has been the story though for the past three rounds. Or, well, for the past two rounds. The first round of their win, kind of dicey, let's be real. Cerberus doing an incredible job of wiping out everyone on the Bren roster, but just couldn't get the defuse on the spike. But next two, very convincing here for Bren Esports. And we tout how Bren has improved so far and they're proving it here in the SEA scene. Kishido and Akashi on the board and Cerberus proving that they will not back down from a fight. Wits in the meantime, finding Akashi in response and it's 4v3 here. Kishido quite low, running back now, has been shut down as Wits will force Kishi back to the connector there. But Jesse Bash doesn't care about the blinds. So he's gonna take down the Phoenix one and Suka and Dyklem. They will get their names on the board as well. Borkum though, he's got him one. He won here. And this is Borkum time through HP and a dream. TikTok on the clock. And just one more shot to rule them all. And one shot to find them. Truly, this is the gong ringing for Borkum as Bren Esports will find the clutch in them yet again. You knew this was coming, Dax. Guys, it's just Borkum time yet again in round number six. We're heading into round number seven. Bren up by four consecutive rounds. That was a nasty clutch for Borkum. As we take a look at this replay right here, you can see his positioning, playing around that default box really, really well, isolating those angles, turning that 3v1 into multiple 1v1 scenarios. That is the only win condition that Borkum had. 
and CES perhaps failed to exploit on that fact. Just finding the single duels, basically. Borkum in the right position at the right time. Kishi, though, letting that Sheriff ring. It does get the ding there onto the Spencer to shut down at least the Killjoy from this equation. That's a big pickup because that could have been a lockdown play for Freddy Sports if ever. But here we have a dubstep now. Confident that he is. Takes down Suka, but Loki now with the refrag. Jesse Basto on the board. Borkum holding the back line. And with Dykelem caught down, it's only one angle of attack here from the side of Cerberus on their defense. It's Akashi now all alone. Oh, by the garage, though. He does have the Hunter's Fury while the Trailblazer is scouting. But this is looking very tough for Surfers so far, and it's going to get even tougher as Bren Esports will secure the round. This is now a problem for Cerberus because if you are a fan of the Philippine scene, there is one thing that Bren Esports thrives on clutch momentum. Borkum mm -hmm. with the 1v3 clutch a while ago, turning the 3v1 to a, a 3 versus something that I have won, says the Omen. And now, with a 5 round streak for Bren Esports, when they are this hot, when they have this momentum, it is undeniable that they look nigh unstoppable until you actually put a stop to their efforts because for the next few rounds, Bren Esports will look to be as strong as they can be Go in, go ham, get the takedowns, take the sights. And that is just a fact of how strong their momentum really enables them to play. I feel like for in terms of a, a team, Red Esports do have a few caveats in terms of finishing off games and getting off the good start. But when the plus side is on them, once that scale tips in their favors, they are one of the best teams in SEA that can really run with that momentum. Can Akashi though shut this down? Does get a tag onto Spencer, I believe. That's just it. That's all they get from that. And Brent Esports, they get the pick off. Jesse Bash off with the first blood onto Kishi. And again, Kishi's always been the guiding light for the side of CES. Without him on the board, it's just a lot more dire for the situation right now. Brent up by five consecutive rounds. Jesse Bash with the Hunter's Fury and Dispenser with the lockdown in play. Meanwhile, Dubstep going for that aggressive operator on attack. He does get one onto left. Loki. Execution is nigh for Red Esports onto Seaside. With Spencer Doe on the board, now all about all up to Akashi here. Can't even do anything against Bren. Not this time. And there you go. Five becomes six. But still all five members alive for Bren. This is where it gets even tougher now for Cerberus. We said all about the bread momentum, and this is the perfect call here from Cerberus so far. Turn that grail scale on. We are going to go into a timeout because Brent has not only gotten convincing round wins, they found the clutch in them, they have the guns now, and they will have money for a good part of this half. So this is the question of Cerberus. Mm. How will they manage this? How will they figure things out? And for you, Bim, what's, yeah. what's the problem right now for Cerberus? Because it's just been Brent all day since the third round. You know what? If I were CES, I would really try to hang back just a little bit. They have been getting shut down in terms of those aim duels. I mean, when you lose by six consecutive rounds, that means you're losing majority of the gunfights. Especially in Haven, where it's so easy to punish those early aggressions on, on uh, A and C long. Really the answer to this, when you're down for the count, go for a full retake. You do have um, an Astra. Cosmic Divide is going to be in play. Hunter's Fury is going to be in play. And then you also have a Killjoy. Wait for those ultimates. Try to get the orbs at the very least. And go for a full retake. Honestly, that's the only way I see CES coming back at this point in time. You know, it's ironic, actually. Because CES have gotten more success out of their dry peaks this game. From what we've seen so far. But mm -hmm. at the same time, with, with removing the active proactivity that we saw a while ago on the scent, the angles and looks and crannies that they took Brent for a surprise with, then they're going to lose out in the long run. Because those were the opportunities as Dubstep finds the opportunity there for Sakash to get that takedown. Those are the opportunities that gave Cerberus the man advantage on Ascent. And if it's just going to be Dry Peak versus Dry Peak, Bren Esports has proven so far in this game 
that they're willing to go at it. If they just get the setup, they will go for the knockdowns. If they see the duel, they're happy to go for it. And here we go again. Kishi will just run on in just to die. Suka does find the Spencer there, though, on by a long. But as the lockdown will corner the Killjoy, it's Borkum with the execution. All up to die. right now alongside Loki. One on the front lines, one in the back line. Trying to make a sandwich here out of Bren Esports. But it feels like there's just too much filling on this side. And in the middle, it's Bren Esports watching, waiting, and securing the round. Seven! And now the score here for Bren. Servers again. They they improve yep. on one side of their game, but unfortunately, the other aspect that helped them out immensely in the last game, we're not seeing it now here. Absolutely right. And possibly because, again, at this point in time, most of the Bren wrestlers just kind of feeling it. You can sort of see that they're a lot more warmed up than last game at the very least. But really, taking a look at the agent composition again for CES, maybe if they had a raise, you could outpeak or at least get to that angle first before Dubstep can peek it with his operator. But they don't. And maybe if you had a Reyna, you could flash out and make a play. Maybe if you had a Sky, you could flash out and make a play, but they don't. But you know what? Rennie Sports is going to make a play onto A side here. Dykelem does get one onto Wits. Lockdown, oh. though. Bending them off here, Vim and Borkum. He's stuck, but it's not the worst situation. He can try to step if ever that's the case. But Daikalem, look at the angle he's taking. This is going to be perfect. Dispenser, though, in the meantime, gone out. Ah, the timing. The timing. The timing was just perfect there for Dispenser. As soon as he was ready to, for action, he went for the peak himself and caught Kishi for a surprise. Many players were just still hang on back, but not. On the side of Bren Esports, and really, we know that mm. Servers Esports, they such a smart team. Incredible, incredible efforts to make it to the playoffs, but right now, it's getting out-muscled by Bren. And yeah. it's just a fact here that it's been seven rounds in a row, and it hasn't stopped so far, Vim. You know, you left. can tell from, from how CES is moving around the map that they're, they're really kind of paralyzed at this point in time. Uh, when you're trying to guess or read where your opponent is is going to pop out of, trying to guess if they're where they're rotating, you get a lot less confident in taking those aim duels. And right now, Bren is capitalizing on that fact. And Cerberus, well, signed back on the way. He saved the guns for a rainy day. From 7 to 2, it becomes 8 to 2. And things get even more and more dicey here for Cerberus Esports. We mentioned how gritty they can be to go for a victory against a top team and we saw it especially against alter ego but there's also a bit of that negative side if you look back into that group stage against ae the round the, the maps that they lost unfortunately weren't as competitive as they would like i believe it was 13 to 6 on split before mm -hmm. cerberus won out in overtime to qualify for the playoffs and when they do get out muscled like this it does seem like that's one of their weaknesses in terms of that raw firepower on their side. They're such a tactical team that can outsmart teams that try to go for the outplays, to go for the anti-strats, with having multiple, multiple varieties on their own. And you can see they have a lot of thrust within each other with how they play. But just these small little slip-ups that have been being shown here by Brand Esports, and the fact of the matter is not everything that Cerberus unleashed last time we're not seeing it here this time because Haven is still a different map, unfortunately. Things are just going in favor of Brenny Sports again and again and again. Oh. And even though Cerberus wants to contend, My God. Bren is, Brenny Sports is just making them sit down and be humble. Daikalem couldn't make that Blade Storm work, unfortunately. Bren will be scouting on the round. But immediately, one pick off like that changed the tempo of a game like this, especially if you're on the defending side of Haven. Minus one player makes it even harder to scatter yourselves around these sites. Loki trying to keep an overlook over there onto C site. Seems like Bren's grouping up over here onto C long, preparing for yet another C execute here. Dubstep, he's on the operator, yes, but he can make an entry still with that Blade Storm. But seems like Wits will be the one making an entry here. Arrow onto backside. Loki pops out that gravity well. 
Asuka though holding the line yet again and there we go that backside has been his baby and he's happy to stay there to get through but dubstep for come on the board all about the cashy now here by the garage but dubstep swoops on in like an eagle looking for prey with a triple kill there with a blade storm and this half is looking to be all bren ever since they won their third round third round it's nine to two here 12 kills for dubstep and for come respectively heading the class but it has been a masterclass so far here from Ben Esports. Cerberus, they are taking notes. They are making waves for themselves, yes. But it just doesn't seem like it's enough here versus Bren so far. It seems like they always get caught off guard when, as soon as Bren goes for the burst play. Bren's running down the clock trying to get early picks. And again, CES, I do understand them. You know, they're trying to make a play. They're trying to gain information on the map because they can't simply relinquish all map control, right? I think the retakes didn't really work, their early plays didn't really work, so they're in a bit of a tough spot right now. But Bren, just knowing what to do every single time, trying to reading their opponent as dubstep takes down Akashi right there. I think it really just proves the improvement of Bren Esports as a whole. But Loki at least, chiming on in, getting that takedown onto one of Bren's uh, side, and Borko is the one that falls. Dykelem though, perfect opportunity! Using the alarm, but as distraction, catching out the Spencer. And those are the scenarios where we love how servers plays. Just mm. active proactivity, just active on the passivity, rather. And just holding those defensive angles in such a good motion, in such good timing. And Zyklem, he's showing how good he can be with the 3k. It's all up to dubstep right now, but Loki will shut him down. A little bit of mischief, perhaps, here for Cerberus. And at the very least, they will salvage that last round. But Bim, is it little too late? We saw the smart plays there from Cerberus. We saw how effective they could be with a single distraction or with a single angle that Bren Esports is not watching out for. But unfortunately, the fact, the, the reality here, Bim, is the damage has been done. And wow, yeah. this was an impressive round for Cerberus. It's still 9-3. to three, And Cerberus is going to need this pistol round badly if they want to contend in this map. Yeah, you know what? Arguably, if they win the first round, perhaps you know it's still very much within the realm possibility for them to tie up the scoreline. Again, we don't know how the dynamic is going to be working out as CES assumes the attacking side of the map. But if they lose this pistol round, Dex, I do agree with you. It's This is going to be, I think, a long shot for CES if they do lose that first round. Yeah, Cerberus, they have so much tricks under their sleeve. And unfortunately, Bren Esports isn't even letting them put on the magic show at all with how they've been playing so far. Yes, there have been times with the PH Squadron running down the clock, but then suddenly bursting into the seams and catching out Cerberus for more or less of a surprise. And while the Vietnamese Squadron has been fighting on back and has been as pretty as they could be, the results speak for themselves, and the ding there from Dubstep speaks volumes of how this game is going for servers. Brand Esports off the good start there with a the Sheriff pickup from afar. This time though, Akashi answers back with the free classic, and there's nothing you can beat for than free. And right now, Kishi gonna be beating Borkum there. Can servers get for though? That's gonna be the question. Akashi gonna get on the board, especially still fighting on back. But servers they knew their lives were on the line for the pistol round, and they will achieve the victory that they desperately needed. It's 9-4. We're not done! This is Cerberus with gun bats coming into the second round of the second half. You know, I don't want to jinx it, but perhaps we're just at the tip of the iceberg here for map number two in Haven. CES taking the most important round so far in this game for them. If they are if they want to mount a comeback, they definitely got to start it with that uh, first round. Obviously, Daikalem, he's going to go all in with his marbles here. He's going to go for a Vandal. If he loses that, though, that's going to be disastrous for the side of CES. So again, better be careful with Kishi, though, onto the first blood with Wits as the rest of them try to make their way onto A long. Jesse Bash is going to be caught unaware as well. Yeah, this is a good start. Not only did they get two pickups on A side, they also put Dubstep so low in the middle already. And now he is so very dead as Kishi is rampaging and ready with the run it back. Here we go again. The steps to success here for Cerberus. They're coming to pass him. Not only do they have the Phoenix Ultimate ready to go, it's Kishi right now getting the takedowns that they need. Daikalem watching out for any kind of potential exit frags, if ever, any kind of flank. But the Spencer will just wait instead. Close range with a Frenzy. Good start though for Cerberus, and we were talking about it again, and it's the same answer, Viv. You asked mm. about the Sky versus Phoenix, the Initiator extra on the side of Bren versus the extra Duelist on the side of Cerberus, and 
Cerberus proves that they know what to do with this Phoenix. They know that Kishi is someone you can rely on. And he has run back yet again to prove it. And as Loki will make it flawless here for Cerberus losing no one, it's still a fight. It's still a, a tussle. And it proves that Cerberus never gives up whatsoever in the SCA challengers. Yes, Kishi's down to 69 HP there on the board. Just proceeds to feed on his prey the rest of the Bren Esports squadron. And during those eco frags, during those, those eco rounds um, for Bren, CS can really thrive in that. Kishi can have his run it back and basically farm that round, right? So now in this buy round for Bren, he's going to have that run it back. That brings their win, win uh, percentage really much higher than it should be against uh, Bren, who has a firepower advantage here. And if they play the right angles, especially with the Phoenix, it'll be so paramount to their success. I think an A or a B take will work out very yeah. well here for Cerberus so far. And as I say that, it seems like they are going to go for that B side, if ever. If they do want to go to C, they can transition if need be. But here we go, Guided Light going to be into play. And Witch trying to prepare on the right hand side. That lineup is perfect here for Witch. He has gotten three so far. And everything that Cerberus has planned has gone to the wayside as Witch steps in front of the door and greets Cerberus with a resounding 4K. Witch there! Never ending, never stopping, always someone you can lie on here for Brent Esports, and they shut down the sound plans of Cerberus Esports. Let's take a look at this replay. Again, it's just them uh, sort of rushing in blindly through the smoke, which is a bit of a curious play right here. Loki goes down in the end as Wit secures the victory. Now, Kishi is their lone flasher here. Uh, granted, Loki can make it a much easier job by utilizing those gravity wells, smoking out those entrances, and then concussing as well. Mm. But really, there's not a lot of explosive burst potential, you know, other than flash from the Phoenix and dash in from the jet. But if you can't do that, then it's going to be pretty tough. And I feel like sometimes teams do funnel on in too frequently. Mm -hmm. We already knew that was the dark cover from Borkum. He's the only Omen in the roster, and Serpus... Right. Might have been able to play at least someone on the most right side of that smoke to play a little further away from the easy lineup of wits and at least make it a contention point if ever. But unfortunately, it was just, of course, wits there looking for fair than Dispenser saw Kishi and now he's there, he's dead. That intel was enough for Dispenser to get that take on Daikon though with a refrag making it 4v4. And here comes Cerberus looking to set up on Seaside, but Bren Esports is still waiting it out. The Seekers hounded Loki and now it's gonna be Wits confirming that kill. Really a chain of takedowns for Wits exemplifies and just amplifies what he brings to the table here for Bren Esports. Now that Bren knows that Cerberus is in that location, it's an easy shot and an easy takedown. And here we go yet again. Dubstep, so precise, so secure with a wall bang headshot. It's all up to Akashi and Daikalim now. But it's unfortunately headless chickens here for Cerberus. Left. They're running around the map. They don't know where to exactly go. B might look to be a safe location. C is a possibility as well. But it all lies to Daikalem making this lurk play happen. It does not. Wits is there to get that takedown. And the guiding light is just perfectly timed. If every single step of this round has been on a meter, it does feel like it's been going into Brandy Sports favor here, Ben. I don't think Akashi is even going for the spike plant here. Wits finishes him off. It's just... It's just... You know, I can't blame CES for looking like headless chickens right there because it's just so hard to predict where Brandon's going to be popping out and they're sort of patrolling the map on the prowl here. You know, after Dispenser got that kill, it's just Wits holding down Seaside, then Dubstep out of nowhere, holds down a side as well, and then Wits is just on the guard over there onto b site. It's just so unexpected. CES was trying to be really clever in that round, and that was a really good effort. But in the end, Bren sort of read them as well. Perennial number one team of the Philippines. And they're finally making a valid case for themselves to be the number one in SCA. Their improvement has been stellar in Borkum right now with a sick shot on the Loki. But Bren Esports, you cannot deny their journey so far. How they added on wits, how they have improved in the SCA scene, slaying down some rivals in the community scene, just making it yet again a 3-4-3 being an SCA rep. 
Never count out the opposition here in the SEA playoffs as Cerberus will fight on back with the Sheriffs. Not only that, Kishi now able to pick up a Phantom, and since he has the run back, he can actually use that later on for this round. Spike Hill has been planted out yet. It's a chance, a hope, a prayer here for Cerberus. But Bren looking to just go for that push on the B side. But Jesse Bash and Fork of Doom takes the nine. The one taps are real here from Cerberus. It's all up the damn set right now. He gets the first kill on the Kishi. Can he go for more? Dashing on in into the smoke. But a thrifty victory here from Cerberus is going to send ripples onto the economy of Bren Esports right now. We're not done. It looked to be decisive for Bren Esports, but it does seem like Cerberus will always fight. They will never give up on their duty to deny Bren Esports a chance to the semifinals. And they will try to fight Bren until the bitter end. Seems like we're far from done here, Dax, as that thrifty around you know, tends to swing the momentum in favor of the team who gets the thrifty. But Brent's going to be answering back here. Dubstep does have a blade storm. Dispenser does have that lockdown. They still have full buys here. They're going to be on the defense. They could either go for that highly aggressive play really early on, or maybe go for a retake. But then again, at this point in time, when you have the enemy in your control, there's no reason to go for a full retake. You can definitely maximize control of the map. And once you've actually read them, and the fact that CS isn't really being unpredictable right now, they're going to be funneling in through Garage as Dispenser takes down Suka. Platform power position yet again in the Jesse Bash guarantee, and now you get it twice because it's going to be nice here for Jesse Bash. 2K4 and Borkom on the board, and Dispenser will be there to wrap that one up neatly. A five course meal for Brent Esports, and they are just hungry for some dessert right now. And this is going to be the next course on the menu. Here, Mr. Viminal, because it's match point now for Brenny Sports. And just what a short lived breath of life for CES. Quite unfortunate for that one. It's just, and they just funneled in through Garage and they were dismantled by Brenny Sports one by one. It seems like Bren, this time around, they will be taking full control of A Long. This is going to be a cross map play as they go for that flank and try to shoehorn CES onto the middle of the map. Yeah, Cerberus are going to try at the very least to go into the middle, but can they actually keep hold of it if that spike gets put down on B side? Thing is though, might be a bit of bait switch here from Cerberus, going for a last hurrah, going for another incredible play in their playbook. Then again, Fantasy and oh, Fury boy. does not mean reality, but Kishi, he realizes that Brent is coming from A site, and he gets one there onto Jesse Bash, but Borkum with the refrag. We're not done, it's 4v4. Dispenser, though, he might get caught here by Dykelim. And there we have the peak from Dispenser. Kashi now with a refrag, shutting down the turret. Phantom is picked up. It's 3v3 now. And Brand Esports, well, can they actually make this hold work? Paranoia gonna get thrown on over. Shock that is the response. And the Kashi will get that takedown. Witzel on the board yet again. And the lockdown now taking on away. Cerberus buying space for themselves. As Brand will have to respect that. A little bit of time here for both of these squads to change the pace of the game. You know, that lockdown is going to be in place. Zero players detained, but Wits is going to be going out with those Seekers. Oh, they're now they're going to attempt with a retake. Akashi at the back of a sight, and there we have it. It's a big blind already, putting a stunning presence onto Akashi there. Hunter's Fury, though, is the call. Forcing Brent to respect that. The back on the way. Dumps up now with a push on forward. And get the audacity of this map to go for the push. And the aggression from Brent Esports have had shown their fangs bared. And Brent, they have slayed the Guardians of the semifinals. Perhaps time is ticking, but this should be enough. Close. But no cigar servers esports as Bren will tube to be so, so lethal with a 2-0.